it's your boy. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to do that. Bruh. I am super stoked today to bring you the all new 2024 Jeep Wrangler. While you guys may say it's not all new, it's still a JL body style, I would agree with you. However, they have redesigned it for the 2024 model year. And there's a couple things that give it away really quickly. You can tell us the 2024 really easily by this grill. All 2024s have this blacked out grill. And if you recognize it from somewhere before, it's because it's a carryover from the 20th edition Rubicon that you've seen in the past. One other change from this is for the first time from the factory, you can actually order a worn wench that goes right here. This cover comes right off and you can see the wench there. I wanted to stop by and look at this particular uh, Rubicon because this comes with the factory winch. So you can see here, it says Jeep, it's a worn winch. Again, the tow rating on that is 8,000 pounds, which is really impressive to have. No, the Jeep doesn't weigh 8,000 pounds, but what it does allow you to do is to tow out some of your friends in their bigger vehicles. They might need that extra weight to be able to be pulled out. It also gives you the confidence that you're not gonna have to overstress your vehicle if you're in a really sticky situation where you need that extra oomph to get yourself out. This has the Rubicon X package. You can tell because the tires being the size that they are, which we'll get into in a moment, necessitates to have this little extra protection to make sure that you don't damage any of the paint or fling rocks someplace that you really don't want it to go. Speaking of protection, these come with rock sliders that you can get from the factory, which is not super uncommon, but it is very important to make sure that you have that so that way you don't damage anything. <laughs> And for those of you guys that get these without them, chances are if you do some off-roading, it's going to be an aftermarket upgrade that you get. Anyhow, might as well get it from the factory. Taking a look here, these both have the factory rock sliders, but if you notice, they're a little bit different than the one that we've been reviewing, where it has what they call step assist. They actually stick out so you can put your foot on it. Here you open it up and there simply just isn't a spot for you to put your foot to get in. So you really do have to get into these. Um, a little bit more than on there where at least you have something to help yourself to get into it. I noticed that because of how this sits, that even for someone of my height getting in is a little bit of a climb in, nothing too bad, something you would expect for this. Um, it definitely makes me miss my amp research sliders that come out on my truck, but it's really cool that you get such hardy protection from the factory. We talked about the trim here protecting from the oversized tires because this has the extreme package. You get 35 inch tires. They're actually 315 70s, but they equate to about a 34 and a half inch what qualifies as a 35 inch tire, which from the factory is great. And I love this beadlock wheel on it, which if I read correctly is actually beadlock capable. So it's not just an appearance piece. It's actually functional for those that you want to do that. Another really cool feature that they spot the bit bit in half foot simple. Another really cool feature they decided to implement for the 2024 model year is full float rear axles. So that big Dana that you have in the back that's gonna protect you anyhow is even better. For those of you who aren't aware of what a full float is versus a standard hub, all it is really is a much more robust, better design where the hub is on bearings instead of supporting it with the axle. All the extra weight of these tires and your off-roading is gonna be more evenly distributed so you don't end up breaking things. And it's often expensive yet commonly done aftermarket upgrade. This is a reinforced Jeep gate hinge that comes from the factory, which is really cool too. So steel bumpers, front and rear, and you get the additional support to help with the heavier tire, which is really nice. Yeah, that's solid. It does not wiggle. Yeah, that's really sturdy. That's really nice. It's been a common complaint on previous Jeeps that they were kind of wiggly, so. Notice that there's an antenna that's typically missing here, and it's something that on my off-road adventure that we went on with the Bronco, if you haven't seen that, check out the link below. The antenna I actually took off to make sure that it didn't get damaged snagging on any tree limbs. They decided to take care of that for us and finally integrate it into the windshield. So no longer will you have to worry about your antenna getting messed up. One of the things I really want to talk about is the paint color. If you guys watch my channel, you know how I'm a sucker for good paint. I love this Earl Grey color and they have some other really cool features. It's something that is different than what we're seeing everywhere else where it seems like a lot of manufacturers like to follow in Ford's design where he once said they can have any color they want so long as it's black. And a lot of manufacturers are going to, they can have any color they want so long as it's some shade of black or white or whatever. So having something a little bit different is awesome. And Jeep still has some really cool colors out and there's a few others out there, but I really like that. Something I noticed on this too, if you look at the front windshield, you'll notice where it has the front camera up there and it actually has the little defroster lines. My truck doesn't have that and it's been cold enough lately. I get into my truck and it says, front collision detection is unavailable because of ice. It's blocking. I'm constantly getting alerts about something I'm already aware of. 
Seems like a pretty simple fix for that problem. The parts I like about this Jeep starts at the front bumper and ends at the rear bumper. Everything in the middle I like. My life be like Done. Let's talk about the engines for a moment. There's a few different engine options for the 2024 model year. One of them, and I think has been the most popular based on things that I've seen, is this particular engine. Yikes. Um, which, oh my gosh, you can tell it's new new is the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 that's been offered for quite some time. It puts out 285 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque, which is really interesting when we talk about some of the other engines. And yes, there is a 392 that hopefully we'll get a chance to look at today. But I also want to talk about that two liter inline turbo because there's a few things that surprise me about it. All right, so we talked about the 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar. Now let's talk about this two liter turbo inline four. This is something that has been featured on other Jeeps in the past. It's not a new engine. They've even tried it with the E-Torque, which is something slightly different than the 4XE, where you have a turbo and a hybrid option. This is not the hybrid option. This is simply the standalone two liter inline four cylinder. It's turbocharged that puts out 270 horsepower, which is down from what the V6 is. But interestingly, it puts out 295 foot pounds of torque, which is up 35 foot pounds from the V6. So it's interesting how that balances out. And one of the things that I've noticed in some drag strips tests that I've seen is that this is actually a faster version of the Jeep Wrangler. So even though I would have thought on paper this would have been the slower one, it's actually faster and a bit more peppy than what the V6 is. And many people are calling it underrated and undervalued. As you move into the interior, you're gonna notice most of the changes that are brand new for the 2024 model year that's never been done on a Wrangler before. And let's start with these seats. Not only is it Napa's leather interior, but you have power seats for the first time ever. And who do you have to thank for that? Probably Ford. The Bronco started that in 2021, and Wrangler figured out they probably better get on the ball if they want to keep up. Competition is always a good thing. So not only does it bring you power seats for the first time ever, but you also get a much larger display to keep up with some of the competition out there. Now, Jeep wasn't just concerned about having some creature comforts in there. They recognized that there's potentially some safety concerns with the lack of airbags they've had on previous models. New for this year, they got their engineers to finally design airbags to have side curtain available on the new 2024 models that come standard that allow you to have that additional protection even with the doors off without obstructing your vision like they would have had to do in previous designs. The power seats are something that's new for 2024. I know we talked about it, but just to show you in further detail, it can control the back, your up, down, forward, back, and you actually get the lumbar controls electronically done for the first time, which is really great. It might have taken them too long, but I'm glad that it's here all the same. The seating in here is pretty comfortable. I do have the seat back as far as it can be, and I have the steering wheel back. It's not power on this, but it does still tilt and telescope. Get that in there. It's a comfortable driving position for me. Um, there's plenty of room. I'm not hitting it there. It is a little bit more narrow than on some of the other vehicles um, where my shin hits a little bit, but it's a Jeep Wrangler. What do you expect? It's not exactly a luxury off-roader, um, and it still isn't a problem, but I wonder how it's going to be for the passenger behind me. Let's check it out. All right, so getting in here. Gosh, <laughs> let's try that again. Maybe I can actually get in successfully. So if we go to get in, keep in mind, because of the additional height that you get with these tires, it does make it a little bit of a climb in for people, even someone my height. So getting in, trying to sit behind myself. I mean, it's tight for sure. I have to sit like this. There's no other option. I, I guess I could try and sit like that. But man, that's a tight squeeze. Um, but again, this is worst case scenario. Seat is all the way back. Although I do imagine that even someone shorter than me is going to have the seat back all the way. Um, so for a taller passenger in the rear, it's probably not the most amazing experience. But I've actually ridden in the back of smaller Jeeps as well. It's not the worst experience in the world. It's just not something you'd probably want to do on a really long road trip. But you want to go out with your friends and have fun off-roading. It's still great. There's still plenty of room. Lots of headroom here, um, even with the soft top. The hard top wouldn't be much lower than that, so that's not really an issue. And you probably couldn't fit three full-size adults back here comfortably unless they were smaller adults. Uh, but it is still enough room uh, that you could fit people in here comfortably and probably a family would enjoy this very well. So do I wish I had a little bit more space? Yes, but it's a Jeep Wrangler. Once again, there are different options available, even from Jeep where you can still have some off-roading fun that offer you a little bit more interior comfort. The windows are controlled here because obviously the doors can come off, so you have to do that. You have a 110 outlet as well as some USB ports to charge all your things, which is really nice. So they still kept that up to date. This should open up. If I can get it to open up. Oh, is it locked? It might be locked. Can I get it to open? Yes. So it's a latch design there that keeps it there and that way you can have your cup holders, but it makes it so that when you're off-roading doesn't just flop down all willy-nilly. Let's see if that goes up better. It does, it locks in. There's some I've been in, even one that we've tested, where you really had to push that back in there to get a click. That went in nice and easy, so no problems there. But 
not a terrible back seat all in all for people. And I imagine that again, if you're not 6'4 like me, you probably enjoy the back seat all the same. So as you can see, the rear can actually hold quite a bit of stuff here. This is the exterior mirror kit that you can get as an option so that when you take the doors off, you still have side view mirrors, which is something you're probably still gonna want to be safe in traffic. You also have the bag, which holds the soft top, I imagine. And it comes with some all weather mats particular to this order that you have here. But you can tell there's still quite a bit of space that you get in the back of a Wrangler. It's not something that you have to worry about. Gosh, what if we want to go on a trip? Will there be space? Probably. I'd climb in if I could. I always like to. But I can see here. Let me move some stuff around. Look at that nice Alpine sub. The system in this does sound pretty nice, especially from factory. And it really makes me wish that my truck had a better sound system. But oh no, there's a decent amount of space back here for things that you might want to do on your off-roading adventures. I love this big infotainment system. Let's go ahead and start this up real quick for you guys. It's 1941, you can see that. I love when they do little things like that. Little Jeep going across. Oh, that's cool. So the Jeep actually followed along this ridge. That was really neat to see. All right. So pretty similar from the other Jeeps. If you guys know anything about the JL platform, it's been around since 2017. Uh, I think I've said that a few times, but what's great is that it's it's familiar. The few changes that we have here is the infotainment system. Instead of having one square, we have the 12.3 inch um, display here. Uh, still, the windows are here, right? So you can roll the windows up and down because the doors come off. They needed to centralize it right there. Because this is the Rubicon, you have the front and rear lockers, the rear only, the off-road sway bar disconnect. It has all the auxiliary ports, which is great for you to wire up to cool lights that you want to do later. I mean, it's, it's pretty standard that you have there. Show you the little key thing. So this is meant for the key right here. Oop. So you can put the key right on in it so it doesn't go out and go anywhere, which is great so that it doesn't fall out of your pocket. And if you're getting in and out of your Jeep, you can just put your key right in there and it stays put. So kind of a neat design there. Center console, you have a small little pocket up top and then a bigger one down below. Interesting thing to note about this top one is that if you have a newer phone, like I do, it it really doesn't fit anywhere at all like no matter what you do it doesn't fit i mean i guess kind of but i'm not comfortable with that but you do have the wires that can go out so you can uh, charge your phone that kind of stuff chance you have to put it in there or get a phone mount some way right there for it um, but handbrake standard i mean it's still a wrangler you still have all the off-road stuff that you would expect so it's a fairly simple design the power seats are a nice touch um it, it's had leather before but the power seats are long overdue the reason why they delayed that is because with this package it can afford 34 inches of water which is super impressive they wanted to make sure that while that can come up above the seats potentially or at least the bottom of them that everything was sealed up nicely so you don't have any sort of electrical issues um i do think that's something they couldn't have implemented sooner uh, but until the Bronco came into the mix, there really wasn't a need. The Bronco does have that, so Jeep had to keep up and have that as well. So, yeah, nothing too earth-shattering changes in the inside, except for this. So when you open that up, it's a one-touch, it's their Sky one-touch power top. It opens up all the way, going clear back. So I don't have to get out anymore or undo latches or any of anything like that to be able to get that top off, which is really cool. And if I close it, boom, just like that. Your connect is up here for your garage door openers or your gates or whatever you need to do. Standard adjustments are here on the side. And then I do believe that you can actually still take this top off to have it completely open air. So beyond just this, you can take them completely off. Although I would say if I had this, I don't know if I would take it completely off very often because this works so well. And I like it so much better than how the Bronco does its soft top where you have to get out and retract and about smash your fingers 12 different ways. And that's not a hard thing. You get used to it pretty quick. This is just so much more effortless and it's nice. It is noisy on the highway we experienced, uh, but that's to be expected of a soft top. And again, that's a Wrangler thing. Uh, sometimes when they say it's a Jeep thing, that's kind of what they're talking about. But I do love them. Oh, I love that that's like perforated leather too. A nice soft touch thing there. I mean, you can look at the grill and now I see it. I can't help but see which ones are the older ones. Like you spot it a mile away. 2024, 2023 or older, 2023 or older, 2023 or older, 24, 24, 24, 24, 2023 or older, 24, 24, 24. You can spot them a mile away the second you spot the differences. The grills do look much different. Instead of having a very large grill, you get a slightly smaller 
uh, more subtle grill, and this is the 4XE that we haven't really talked about. And you can tell the 4XE by the signature blue hooks. 4XE simply offers that two liter turbocharged engine that we talked about, while also offering a plug-in hybrid option. And you can clearly see that right here as well. You plug it in and charge it up. The great thing with the plug-in feature, and I've mentioned this before, as I'm starting to become a fan of some of the plug-in hybrid options, because if you're like me and you do a lot of in-town driving, you know, 30 miles or less, you almost have infinite fuel economy. We're using so little gas because of the hybrid system and just the in-town driving, that it can really pay for itself over time, especially with rising gas prices. I know in some areas they've gone down recently, but I'm willing to bet they're gonna go up in the near future. I know that we've been reviewing the Rubicon and the Jeep Wranglers come in many different trims. The Willys is one of those trims where it gives you the good balance of getting great off-road capability at a much lower price point for some of the people who do not need all the off-road functionality that you get with the Rubicon or the interior creature comforts. The interior on this is cloth and it looks fantastic. You still can get the extreme package. You get 35 inch tires. You don't necessarily get the full float rear axle like you get on the new ones, but most people may not need that for their off-roading necessities. And again, the Rubicon does come with a lot more creature comforts like the leather interior and things like that. So if you're looking for a really affordable option, the Willys is a great option. And I've even seen people in some of my videos comment that the Willys is the better Jeep over the Rubicon. I don't know how true that is. You guys let me know in the comment section. What do you think? Is the Willys the better version of the Rubicon or is the Rubicon truly the king of the Jeeps? Now, this is a fully loaded Wrangler Rubicon with everything that you could imagine minus the wench, making the sticker price on this one as tested $76,860, which is nothing to sneeze at. That's quite a bit of money, but you are getting that fully equipped. The base price on this was 51,000. So you can imagine taking out some of those features that maybe you don't want or need, you can still get a fully capable Wrangler at a price point that meets your needs better. So for the, you guys, that can see this i wish that it had on both sides of the screen the front and the rear and you might be wondering why i like the front on there and i will tell you that in my truck that we're actually pulling out next to here um that it has the hd surround sound so i can see all the way around it um gives you just a better sense of visibility it's one of those things that i didn't know how much i liked it until i had it um but i wish i could see the front just to make sure that there's not kids or animals that are going to run around and then end up behind me suddenly i can anticipate that better um, but still, very clear camera system. The colors are bright on it, very nice. Um, and just to remind you guys that we are taking out the Rubicon X that we have here with the 3.6 liter uh, V6 Pentastar. And I won't go through all that. We covered that when talking about all the other vehicle engine options. Um, and the reason why I happen to take this one out is simply because I wanted to know how the Rubicon felt um, with the larger tires and stuff and some of the other vehicles they have on the lot. Um, our great packages, it's the Willys package that offers the 2 liter turbo that I saw back there. Um, but I also just really, really like this color. If we're being completely honest, I love this color, Earl Grey. Um, if I were to get a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, it would be a very close tie between the Sarge Green and this Earl Grey. Uh, just because I like it. And not just because I drink Earl Grey tea, which is also delicious. But, just a really neat color they have here. Hopefully you guys can see the gauges a little bit better. This gauge, while it looks like it's stationary, I'll try and block that off so you can see better, with a two high, four high indicator, neutral and four low. When it, you first started up, and we'll try and get that again, it says since 1941. So a cool little Easter egg that that's actually a digital display and an LCD screen, not just a static indicator there. So we got our tire pressures, which are fairly high, uh, but not too bad. We've got a full tank of gas, so we can go places. So the sway bar is connected right now, and you have your off-road page right there really easily. Uh, able to see that which is great adaptive cruise control is off i actually think i'm going to turn that on here oh wait how do i do that turning it on oh do i have to press these buttons it's fine that's a different thing but it's just showing me if that's on or off and then showing my fuel range i want to reset that real quick to see what kind of fuel economy we get here that's one of the things that i saw uh, from doing this is that the range on these um can vary quite differently between the 3 liter, or excuse me, the 3.6 liter V6 and the 2.0. Um, and 2.0 does get better fuel economy from what I've seen that other people are getting in real world testing. Um, and they're also very impressed with the performance of it, even on 35 inch tires. Um, so even though the 3.6 liter V6 is an upgraded cost for some of the packages, I and mean, you can actually save money by selecting the 2.0 instead, that may not be a bad thing. That may be a way to get a higher trim package at a lower price point, get great fuel economy and enough response in it. And those people, I, I do want to add, were also using uh, the automatic as well. So they were not just limiting themselves to the manual transmission, which you can get a six-speed manual transmission with these, and that's great, which is something to think about that I originally, without having done a ton of research, would have assumed 
The 2.0 is your great in-town cruiser because the turbo is a little bit more efficient, but I assumed also that it, it lacked true power uh, to hang out and get you know, up to highway speeds. And these people are getting that at 70 miles an hour. So um, that's a really good thing to get there. And I think that the 2.0 engine might be an underrated engine uh, compared to the 3.6. The 392, we're not even talking about fuel economy. You don't get a 392 6.4 Hemi and expect to get good fuel economy. It's just not gonna happen. You get that because I guess one, you have the money to burn. Two, you want something that's a bit less common and unique. Um, and I imagine that thing is a kick in the pants to drive. I'm sure it does great off-roading as well. I don't know why it wouldn't. But I do feel like you would probably want, in most cases, uh, the smaller displacement engines for off-roading, being able to just kind of inch around and crawl, um, that just so much torque with that big V8 might cause you to spin the wheels more than you'd really like to. So um, you guys let me know. You guys that actually have them, let me know. Am I, am I full of it? Do I know what I'm talking about? I know that on my 5.7 Hemi, doing some off-roading, every now and again you just get it too much and it creates spin instead of traction. But maybe in these Wranglers it's a bit different. Uh, just let me know in the comment section below what you guys have experienced. Uh, getting up to highway speeds here, and this is an 8-speed transmission, so we should have no problems. And I'm also curious about the road noise with the soft top that we have here. And it is a windy day, I might add. We've been fighting the wind all day. Uh, while trying to film this for you guys. The wind's been pretty constant, about 20 miles an hour, so it's kind of noisy in here, which you expect to get with a soft top and you can hear quite a bit of it. It's interesting that on these 2024 model years, there are some that you can get equipped uh, with acoustic dampening and it's where it actually tries to quiet and isolate you from the outside. This does not come equipped with that. Uh, that would have been a cool thing to try out. Um, I also don't know if that's available with this particular package with the soft top that we have here. Um, or if that's something that you have to have the hard top or a different option selected to be able to get that. But just driving around, pretty good driving. It's not bad. I have driven one of these before with the 3.6, not the new 2024. Um, and not, I don't remember if I was on 35s or not. I have to go back and look. I think it actually was on 35s. But I was still really impressed with how well it did uh, from a naturally aspirated 3.6 V6. And it does well. I mean, for everyday cruising, we're going at 65 here, no problem. We're a little under. I don't really have any huge qualms over it. This isn't really a huge speed demon thing. You Nobody gets a Wrangler, I mean, unless you get the 392, and expect to say, man, this thing's fast. But it's not a slouch either. It doesn't make you want for more go. I cannot keep up with traffic well. And overtaking people simply isn't an option, which let's try that right now. And I was just light application of the throttle and then I managed to get up to 70 pretty quickly without too much issue. I will say that maybe it's because of how new this is that I don't feel the body roll as much as I had on the previous one that I tested which was an, an older JL uh, where it had a lot more body roll when making maneuvers. There is some. You do expect that. It is a uh, tall solid axle SUV but it's not too dramatic. It's not something that you guys can see. I'm not swaying all over the place. In fact, I would argue that the Sienna I test drove had a lot more body roll than what this has, um, even just on the freeway here. But yeah, I do notice the noise. I wish I could turn up the radio to see how that was. It's not bad though, it's, it's a decent driving experience. And we'll see what the fuel economy is showing here. So right now I'm getting 18 currently. The average is coming up, that quick acceleration. And I just, just reset this. So it's gonna be moving around quite a bit. And I'm also trying to keep in mind the RPMs. That's something that when you set the cruise control, I found on my truck to get the best fuel economy. Obviously you want the RPMs as low as you can get uh, while still maintaining a good speed. And I found that above 70 is actually a better spot for it than you know, 65 or 60 in some cases because it wants to downshift a lot to keep it where it's at. And I'm noticing that even right now on this, it's downshifting to keep the speed up. Currently 16. So I actually expected a little bit better fuel economy from this V6 on the highway. Uh, Jeep says on their website there that this should be getting easily over 20 miles per gallon on the on the highway. And so far I'm not seeing that both with the current, oh now I'm seeing it. <laughs> so vehicle just came out in front of me, adapter cruise control kicked in and adjusted for that. The person next to me is having some troubles. Anyhow. It's doing fine. Um, it's riding okay. It's about as noisy as I would expect a Wrangler to be, uh, especially given that it is a windy day. We're getting a lot of crosswind uh, that is contributing to a lot of the noise, I would imagine. And 
Not to knock on Wrangler, but this has the aerodynamic principles of a brick. So not the most efficient aerodynamics possible, and the coefficient of drag on this is not, not great. I think I saw something once that a cow was more aer efficient, aerodynamically efficient than a Jeep Wrangler, which is hilarious. One, that somebody did the research behind that, and two, that it's true. The brakes are responsive, though. Uh, with 35-inch tires, I don't feel like I'm having any issues slowing down. Um, that is something from other Jeeps I've owned in the past where you upgrade the tires and you're quickly wishing you would have upgraded brakes at the same time because all that rotating mass is a lot harder to both get up to speed as well as to slow down. Now, while we're stopped here at this light, I want to talk about a few things. Jeep has done a lot of things to update the interior and bring it into the new age. Some of the things that it's done, including just some minor things here, if I can get this off again real quick, yeah. So in here, if you guys can see this, is some mounts, one on each side, so you can mount a uh, navigation beyond what this can do if you have your own nav, like uh, Onyx or something like that that you like to use, or uh, I know some of the people I've gone out hunting with have their own thing that kind of takes them back to their little honey hole. Um, so that's... A cool thing you have there you can also put a phone mount there if you want to speaking of a phone mount you're going to need it because they did not put a spot in here for your phone there's a really cool spot for the key which i like it's right down here i don't have the key in it presently um but even here in the center console you could put your phone there my phone is too big and it's just a newer iphone and you can definitely put it in there i suppose um but most of the time i think you're gonna have to keep your phone either in your pocket or put it in a cup holder because there simply isn't a designated spot to put your devices unless you get a phone mount um which also, being that it's 2024, they upgraded the infotainment system, they put in airbags where they should have been, they got rid of the antenna so it doesn't snag on things, you get power seats and go on and on about all the things that they did do, uh, but there's no wireless charging, and I guess if I was an engineer, where would I put that? Probably in the center armrest here. Uh, but it's just something interesting to note that this is still a Wrangler. You know, at the end of the day, this is still an off-road first um, adventure vehicle, if you want to call it that, where they are bringing it into the new age slowly, um, because the people that get these are not surprised by that. It would be no, it's, it's meant to be off-road and out doing things, not be, um, again, a luxury vehicle. I think that you, if you wanted that, again, there's other offerings, even from Jeep, that are still off-road capable, uh, that would give you a more luxurious experience. Um, but you're probably gonna have to pay extra to get it to be as capable as this is out of the box. So it's, again, I say this on some of my videos, being a smart consumer, you can't come into a Wrangler expecting it to be the same level of comfort and quiet that you get from a Grand Cherokee um, or you know the Wagoneer lineup. It's not going to be that. Likewise, you can't get a Grand Cherokee or a Wagoneer and expect it to have the off-road capability that a Wrangler does. It's just not gonna be the same. see what kind of average we can get here and yeah, the fuel economy is a bit worse than I expected real world application we'll see on the way back it's possible we had a good headwind uh, coming in and I know again we have mostly a side wind but it can still impact the fuel economy dramatically again because this isn't the most slippery vehicle that they've made still really don't like a Wrangler um, I do wish that interior wise I could have found a way to make them work for my family. I had really been eyeballing uh, either a Wrangler or especially a Gladiator, which I hope to review for you guys soon. They also have some updates for 2024. Um, but just, I needed a full-size truck for my family and for what we do and how we use it. That was the better fit for me. Uh, but these Wranglers and the Gladiators alike can both be great. I know the Wrangler, um, as equipped here, I believe this one can tow 5,000 pounds, which for a lot of people, you can haul a small trailer um, and some few things like that that you may not have an issue. You may not need more towing capacity. And the Gladiators, you can tow a little over 7,000 pounds, depending on how you get it equipped. So it's not that you couldn't make it work. It's just, again, given my size and how I have three kids and that kind of thing, this isn't really a good fit for my family, but that doesn't mean that they can't be a good family vehicle for you, um, depending on how your family fits in vehicles. It's interesting that the fuel economy as it says here isn't that great it's only going up a little bit but the range has not diminished that much we've driven well over three miles and the range has only gone down about three miles if i'm not mistaken um so maybe the fuel economy that it's showing is being a bit more conservative maybe it's showing less than what you're actually getting i know i've noticed that on my truck that it's saying hey your fuel economy is 
17 or 18, but when I do the math on fill up, I'm actually getting closer to 20, if not a little better than 20, depending on my driving habits. And the range actually just went up, funny enough that we were talking about that. Um, or excuse me, I guess it did go down one. Either way, overall fuel, fuel economy is going up. This is a short loop on the freeway. I'm sure if we sustain this long time, it would go up. But the current the current fuel economy is showing is much better at 25. So the wind that we're experiencing today was making a huge impact on our fuel um, on the other trip on the way out versus on the way back. And that's good to see. Like, you know, I was actually concerned that maybe they're really off the mark, but I do think the weather today is playing a huge impact. But it's interesting to note how much of an impact that's playing. Is that because of the engine struggling to keep up? Is it because of the 35 inch tires? If this had, you know, just 33 inch tires or smaller, would we still see that same problem? You know, I'm not really sure. Um, and I'm definitely not gonna go swap out tires to test, but you guys let me know. There's plenty of you Jeep enthusiasts out there who have these, you know, do you notice the wind being a huge factor in your daily commute? Do you see when the weather is awful that you get worse fuel economy because you're trying to fight through all that wind? Um, you know, let me know what you guys have been experiencing. But overall, really happy with it. It's nice to see the Wranglers coming into 2024 and finally catching up with some of that. And I honestly feel like that's because of vehicles like the Bronco. There haven't been very many true Wrangler competitors out there. And I think the Bronco um, is one of the few ones that we have here in the States. And I know some people from other countries have talked about um, some of the vehicles that we just don't get here in America. You guys get cool stuff that we don't get. So really the only true off-road fighter that I can think of that's in the same class would be the Bronco that had the better infotainment system, that had power seats, that had some of those creature comforts that you should have come to expect in 2024. Um, it probably should have been there a lot sooner. But because of the competition the Bronco brought on, Jeep has had to change their ways, and I think that's a good thing. I think that's one of the great things about competition is it brings out the best, or you just get left behind. And Jeep's been around so long, there's no way they're getting left behind. And I mean that in the on-road sense and off-road sense. When we tested them together, it was a very close tie between uh, the Jeep and the Bronco, and the Bronco won in that case simply because of the price point of it. Otherwise, they were very, very, very similar on that. But the creature comforts that the Bronco had that the Jeep was missing, I think that's been leveled a bit more uh, with the Jeep getting up to date, offering the power seats, offering the infotainment system and some of those things. And the small thing with the antenna I wasn't worried about, when I'm off-roading, I'm not trying to crank the radio anyhow. Typically, you're out far enough where that really doesn't make much of a difference. But uh, you can tell that they've really put a lot of thought into trying to get this updated and to make sure that this lasts um, throughout the remainder of its life cycle. So it'll be interesting to see what the next chassis has. But very happy overall uh, with the updates that they've made to the 2024 JL. Well, let's dive further into this UI because it is brand new for this 2024 model year. So before, it was almost like you had just had that. You had just one small square uh, of a screen with the older Uconnect system. And, and this, they've gone a lot more, which allows you to have almost two screens into one with a ton of information available to you. And you can customize this as much as you want. You can add a page, choose what layout you want there. Um, you can also reorder your pages. And aside from me not being able to see exactly where to, to tap on because it's flat to this, I do wish it was canted slightly towards the driver, uh, but this still looks great. It's very responsive and I can touch and do exactly what I'm trying to do that too much problem i'm experiencing this too okay great so if you hit that it takes you directly to that particular page uh it's so almost like it's a shortcut at the same time and that's really nice to have yeah this is usually where i see a lot of lag on uis is when you get into navigation you start dragging things around it wants to freak out and this is doing a really good job um of staying where we wanted at so uh, good job there take a look at the comfort settings everything's there you also still have your physical touch buttons which i love and i still want that but this is nice as well for your passenger to use and it just looks really great for you to choose instead of having to click through some of these options. So these work well together that you're not forced to use one or the other. Uh, they complement each other nicely. The CarPlay on this works about as well as you would expect, um, which is not a bad thing. It's responsive. As far as I can tell, I haven't really tried the music out through it, which I know that some apps like Spotify, when using CarPlay doesn't work as well as just downloading the app itself here, which I believe you might actually be able to download some apps because I see Sirius on there that somebody's downloaded, uh, but you have everything there too. So a lot of information, a lot to go through, I imagine when you first get the vehicle um, to really see where it's all at. You have the off-road pages, you can check out all your gauges that you have in real time, which is nice. It shows you your lat long, what altitude you're at. I mean, there's just a lot to really go through here 
Again, that looks so nice. You can see where your wheels are at. Um, you can do the same thing on the rear. Right? The colors look great on that. You can clean it. So you got a little spray that you can make sure that that's staying clean if you're out there in the dust. Um, oh, let's go back to that for a second. So that little Jeep wave, the little nod to the Jeep wave that um, has become synonymous with this. If, if you don't wave when you go by, uh, it's like a faux pas. You just not okay. I think you get banned from the Brotherhood. I'm not really sure how that works. I'm too afraid to try to not wave. But um, either way, there's a ton of information here in the UI. You can download apps for it, which is cool. Let's check out the weather. Not available. Oh, we don't have the subscription. That's fine. Keep in mind, this is in dealer mode. So some of those things might be locked out until you purchase it. But overall, I'm really happy with this. It's easy to use. I don't try and say that I'm the smartest person in the world. Uh, you guys have seen me and other vehicles have problems just with doors. <laughs> so, I mean, you get an idea of what we're working with here. But it's easy enough to really go through um, and do that in all the settings in here. So really good job with this. Do you like the new UI better? Do you think the old way was okay? Um, is this unnecessary things that could break or scratch or damage while you're off-roading? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below there. But for me, I think that most people are going to be happy with this like I am. All right, now I know you guys are probably interested for to see what the 392 has. And we'll put the numbers up so you guys can see how that stacks up to the other engines that we compared. But I refuse to check this out because someday, one day, I hope to own one of these. But if I drive it now, that day might be today. And I might have to sell my house and maybe a kid or something. I don't know. Either way, I'm not going to touch it because I won't leave without it. Huge shout out to Peterson for allowing me to come here and check out their vehicles. They've allowed me access to their inventory to show you guys what the new vehicles are bringing in. And I really appreciate you guys for watching. Without you, I wouldn't be able to have this kind of connection with them. So thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one where maybe we can check out this new final edition T-Rex in this night edge blue. Something that there's only 4,000 units of and Peterson here is getting 15 units so I've been told. So stay in tune for the next one.